Hello everyone, I am so glad to have you watch our teaching videos. Today we are going to learn about something to do with babies. These are special kind of babies. Let me see if you can guess what I am saying. I will give you a few hints. These babies don't cry. Amazing, isn't it? The second hint is, you can find these babies practically everywhere around you. The third hint is, I'm sure you will get it now. These babies mostly come in green color. That's right, I'm talking about baby plants. Have you ever wondered where these baby plants come from? Who put them there? That's what we are going to learn in this chapter. It's about reproduction in plants. Different plants reproduce in different ways. In this lesson, we are going to look at three ways of reproduction in plants. The first one is reproduction by spores. The second one is reproduction by vegetative propagation. And the third one is reproduction by seeds. Let's look at each of them in a little more of detail. The first one, reproduction by spores. Spores are nothing but dust-like structures formed in capsules which you can find on the surface of the leaves, in fact under the leaves. All plants don't have spores. Plants like ferns and mosses that don't have flowers and hence no seeds have spores. The spores get released and dispersed by wind and the new plants grow out of them. Let's look at reproduction by vegetative propagation. What is that? When a new plant grows from the part of a parent plant, it's called vegetative propagation. Here, only one parent plant is involved. It can happen through roots, stems or leaves. I'll give you a few examples. Think of carrot and radish. New plants can grow from the roots of these plants. There are structures called buds out of which new plants can grow. Vegetative propagation can happen also through stems. Think of a rose plant or sugarcane. Here, reproduction or vegetative propagation happens through stem cutting. Parts of stem can be planted in the soil which can grow into new plants. What if the stem is underground like potato or ginger? In these cases as well, there are structures called buds on the root or on the vegetable which can grow into a new plant. If you look at a potato closely, you can see these tiny depressions that are called eyes. These are the buds. Let's look at other plants like begonia or bryophyllum. These plants also reproduce by vegetative propagation. Here, the buds are formed along the margin of the leaves. When the buds fall off to the ground, new plants grow out of them. Reproduction by seeds happen in plants that have flowers. Flowers, as you know, would become fruits which have the seeds in them. Now let's look at the structure of a seed. The seed has an outer protective covering called the seed coat. The seed coat can be thin like in the case of beans or it can be thick like in the case of a coconut. Now inside the seed or inside the seed coat, there are leaf-like structures called cotyledons. Some seeds have two cotyledons, they are called dicotyledons or dicots and some seeds have only one cotyledon and they are called monocotyledons or monocots. Now these cotyledons carry the food that's needed for the embryo. And where is the embryo or the baby plant? It is in between the cotyledons. Now the baby plant or the embryo has two parts, a plumule that will grow into a shoot and a radical that will grow into roots. If you look at a seed, you can see only the seed coat. Everything else like cotyledons and the embryo 
are inside the seed. If you break open a seed, you will be able to see a baby plant inside. Now let's look at how these baby plants come out of the seeds. That process is called germination. The process by which the baby plants come out of the seeds or grow out of the seeds is called germination. How does that happen? We already saw that the embryo is inside the seed which is nourished by the food that comes from the cotyledons. When the embryo grows a little bit, the seed coat breaks open and the radical first grows into the root followed by the plumule that will grow into the shoot. That's the little plant that you see above the ground, those cute little plants. And when the shoot grows out, the leaves also start growing on them. Leaves, as you know, are the food producing factories of a plant food is produced in the leaves. So when the leaves are there to do the job, the cotyledons are not needed anymore. So they dry out and fall to the ground. When the seeds fall very close to the big plants or the parent plant, it is not very good for them to grow because they may not get enough space or air or water. For the seeds to grow properly, three things are very essential for them. Air, water and warmth. Now water is very important. That's why we water the seeds after we plant them, right? Water softens the seed coat. It also makes the food in the cotyledons soluble so that the embryo can use it. Like I said, when the seeds fall next to the plant, it might be difficult for it to grow into new plants. So the plants have devised methods wherein all these seeds are dispersed away from it. That is called seed dispersion. The process by which the seeds get scattered away from the parent plants so that they can grow into good new plants is called seed dispersion. There are various things that help in seed dispersion. They are called agents of seed dispersion. They are wind, water, animals and seed explosion. Let's look at each of them. Wind. When wind is responsible to disperse the seeds, the seeds have to be small and light. Examples will be dandelions or swan plant. So these plants have light seeds which can be carried away by the winds and dispersed away from the parent plant. In this case, a lot of seeds will be produced by the plant because the chances of the wind actually dropping the seeds on the soil so that it can grow into a new plant are not very great. So the seeds are very large in number. Now let's look at water. Some plants like Lotus, water lily, even coconut and mangroves have water to disperse their seeds. Animals are also good agents of seed dispersion. The birds would eat the flesh part of the fruits and leave the seeds. They disperse the seeds. Sometimes some birds eat the fruit and the seeds. And how do they disperse the seeds? Through their droppings. And some animals carry on their fur some seeds or fruits that are spiky in nature. Sometimes some seeds or fruits stick to our clothes as well. So we also become agents. Now, this summer you must have had a lot of mangoes. After the mangoes, do we eat the seeds? No, we throw them away. We are dispersing the seed of the mango. There is another way in which seeds get dispersed in some plants and that is seed explosion. Have you noticed the seeds of a balsam plant? They have these dried seed pods which split open and explode when they are ripe and the seeds get scattered or dispersed. So we looked at different ways of dispersal of seeds by wind, water, animals and seed explosion. All these different things that we learned today are given in unit 5 of EVS, the life-giving seed. 
Please go through them. There are specific examples of plants that are given there. Please look around you and try and find those plants. Happy learning. Bye-bye.